For many years, it seems like bodybuilders are guinea pigs that are testing or abusing or using substances in doses and combinations far exceeding what they've been tested and approved for, not to mention using questionable substances without guidance or support from the medical community. Are they playing Russian roulette with their health? Or are these bodybuilders onto something when it comes to agents that may help with anabolism or healing? We're going to discuss with Dr. Testosterone whether bro science may be ahead of science or is this merely an illusion? So keep watching. Hi, welcome to Balance My Hormones where we help men and women on their journey to optimal hormone balance. If you're new to the channel, please press like and subscribe so you get future content. So another topic or an area that you had had discussed was you, know, you kind of made a quote saying that you know maybe the bodybuilders uh, have have found out some solutions first before medical science has had the opportunity to catch up. Well, you want to talk about that? That's a good point. So actually, the pro science or what the medical community knows unofficially was aware of this a couple of years ago, and uh, this was widely spread. You know. Um, online or in, in handbooks, but not officially textbooks of medical literature. And uh, we, we were aware about the healing properties of GH, of course, the fat burning properties of GH, the ergogenic effects of steroids, because in the 70s, medical doctors believed that steroids were not ergogenic, they were just healing tissues, you know. And uh, we know that now, for instance, clenbuterol is able to burn fat apart from helping to asthma. Okay, but obviously the medical community is not interested in those side effects that are beneficial for athletes. And uh, yes, I mean, uh, uh, it's kind of a head, you know, but the point is for the medical uh, society, in order to establish this officially, it needs a lot of evidence and a lot of experimental data, you know, in order to make it solid and release it officially, you know. So perhaps in, in few years, we're gonna know, we're gonna, I uh, know uh, by the big pharma that GH will be also given to spinal cord injury, perhaps some, uh, perhaps to, to obesity, okay? Just like anabolic steroids that they can be used uh, for obesity only to oxidize some fat, you know? Or like testosterone that can fight the metabolic syndrome and the diabetes type 2. We've seen in, in America some of the TRT clinics are offering in some cases because of injuries uh, and alone to some of their older patients. But I wanted to touch on something you said earlier was that, um, you know, maybe from the birth science, these things came about. But, you know, if you really look at what's happening in, in the TRT community and the bodybuilding community, uh, they're not uh, isolated from, from doctors. There are doctors, yourself included, who are um, also interested in the sport of, of bodybuilding or for just health purposes. And, and so I don't think they're exactly in, in silo chambers. So could it be that maybe some of these thoughts or ideas of using these substances actually came from doctors who were involved in bodybuilding. Yeah, sure, that's a good thing. The point is there are very few cases and exceptions and actually doctors usually do not train, do not follow this lifestyle so they cannot support it, you know. Um, <laughs> you can you can say that some... I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a few like yourself. I remember back in the, in the 90s, Dr. Mario Di Pasquale in Canada had written the book on anabolic diets. Um, Yes, yes. Uh, but you need, you know, this waived in order to support it. Just, just like the replacement therapy that endocrinologists believe there's no andropose, there's just Kleiner fertile or Kalman syndrome. You just give testosterone when there's a uh, lack of it from the first time, you know, and they don't believe that this declines in the long term progressively as we age. That's why they don't support TRT or HRT as a part of anti aging. It doesn't exist to them, you know, they're black and white. <laughs> Just like yes. the adrenal insufficiency, the, the adrenal fatigue and the burnout, that is a gradual degradation process. And uh, they believe either it's Addison or Cushing disease, nothing else, you know. So there's a gray zone, of course. And uh, you can make your life better with, with hormones and with anabolic hormonal environment. Because as we age, we become more fragile. And also Dr. Hetok says, because there is less... Uh, nitrogen balance, there is less anabolic environment, and it is more catabolic environment, you know? And when we were young, we, we used to be strong because IGF-1 was high, testosterone was high. 
we, we, we used to we used to party out and uh, even though we were sick, you know, and as we can become older, we are fragile because the hormones decline, you know, and we feel more sick, more vulnerable, you know. Yeah, I mean, and maybe more so today in, in our you know, toxic world that we live in, the toxic lifestyles, that this is maybe why we're seeing even more people uh, coming forward, but maybe also because more people are educated to know about you know, TRT, to know, hey, you don't have to you know, just sit there without getting help, that there's help that, that can be available, even if your NHS GP uh, says no. Right? I mean, that's, that's what we find. Uh, maybe the big pharma doesn't want rehabilitation and wants to load on, on painkillers and non-steroid inflammatory drugs, okay, and, and make the system and the, uh, and, the, and the citizens in order to pay more and more, you know. So actually, a sick man, a sick person, costs more to the society by the plethora of drugs that have to be prescribed regularly. Yeah, if there was a healthy uh, society and population, who would prescribe statics or metformin? or on the hypertensive drugs, you know? <laughs> so we have another application to the locomotor system with, uh, with testosterone and the rest of anabolic hormones, apart from uh, the other uh, applications. So um, yes, you can recover faster, and it's not necessarily to, to have a, a spinal cord trauma or to become operated, but from any kind of physical activity, you may recover faster uh, throughout your HRT regimen, you know. Okay, well, that sounds like a win-win. So, so thanks, George. That's um, that's very helpful. Your perspective, and also don't forget to like this video and uh, and subscribe if you want to see more content like that. It really helps the algorithm. So, thanks again, George, for uh, for coming on, and we will we'll see you next time.